Socrates, all I know is that I know nothing. Some people believe they know everything. However, even Socrates, one of the greatest philosophers in history, questioned his own knowledge and is famous for saying, all I know is that I know nothing. Socrates is celebrated as one of the most influential thinkers of all time. Yet this simple statement is what he's most remembered for. Of course, this doesn't mean Socrates was clueless. Everyone recognizes him as a wise man. More accurately, he wasn't a sage, but a philosopher, which literally means a lover of wisdom. But why did Socrates say something that seemed so contradictory? Was he just trying to impress his listeners or seek their admiration? What did he really mean by, all I know is that I know nothing? And why has this idea resonated so deeply for centuries? Let's dive into Socrates' life and teachings to uncover why he remains one of the most important thinkers in human history. Who was Socrates, the author of All I Know Is That I Know Nothing? Socrates is often considered the greatest philosopher of ancient times. Among his students were notable figures like Plato, Alcibiades, Xenophon, and Euclid. His teachings marked a turning point in ancient philosophy, shifting the focus from studying nature and the universe to exploring human beings and spiritual values. Socrates was born in 470 or 469 BC in Athens, Greece, on a day considered unclean, which some believed foretold his unusual destiny. He took it upon himself to act as a moral guardian of Athenian society. Throughout his life, he fulfilled his public duties with great dedication, but without becoming extreme. Ultimately, his unwavering honesty and commitment to his beliefs cost him his life. Socrates came from a family of artisans. His father was a sculptor and his mother was a midwife. He had an older brother who inherited most of the family's wealth, leaving Socrates to live modestly. Despite his poverty when he went to war as a heavily armed soldier, wearing an expensive uniform, it was clear his family once had significant resources. He proved his bravery in battle on three occasions, most famously when he saved the life of his commander, Alcibiades. As a young man, Socrates studied under great minds of his time, including Damon, Conan, Zeno, and Exagoras and Archelaus. However, he left no written works of his own. Everything we know about his ideas comes from the writings of his students and contemporaries, such as Plato, Aristotle, and Xenophon. Socrates' teachings and philosophical views. Socrates never wrote down his ideas because he believed that writing diminished the power of words and weakened memory. Instead, he sought truth through dialogue, engaging others in conversations to explore profound questions. His philosophy revolved around ethics, goodness, and virtue, emphasizing that qualities like knowledge, courage, and honesty are deeply interconnected. For Socrates, knowledge was the foundation of virtue. He argued that without a true understanding of things, one cannot act justly, perform good deeds, or show courage. Knowledge, therefore, was essential for virtuous living because it brought awareness and guided actions toward what is right. The essence of Socrates' philosophy lay in self-knowledge and understanding others. He adopted the motto, Know Thyself, inspired by the inscription at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi, as a guiding principle for his inquiries. Rather than lecturing or presenting systematic teachings, Socrates used conversations to investigate ideas developing a unique method called Socratic dialectics. In these dialogues, Socrates would often feign ignorance, a technique now known as Socratic irony, declaring, all I know is that I know nothing. This humility disarmed his interlocutors, making them more open to questioning their assumptions. Through carefully crafted questions, Socrates would lead his discussion partners to recognize contradictions in their beliefs often guiding them toward deeper, more rational insights. This process of exposing flawed reasoning is known as reductio ad absurdum. Socrates likened his method to his mother's profession as a midwife. He described himself as helping others give birth to new ideas, a process known as mutics. His goal was not to provide answers, but to inspire critical thinking and encourage his listeners to refine their understanding. In his dialogues, Socrates explored fundamental questions about human life and morality, such as, what is courage? What is love? What is kindness? What is justice? What is the good? Through these discussions, he challenged people to think deeply about the principles that govern their lives and actions. All I know is that I know nothing. One of Socrates' most well-known statements is, 
All I know is that I know nothing. This phrase is often linked to Socrates and his philosophy, but where did it actually come from, and what does it mean? Many people mistakenly believe that Socrates used this quote as a form of humble bragging about his wisdom. However, the true meaning behind it is far deeper. What Socrates was really emphasizing is the idea that absolute certainty is unattainable. While we can hold beliefs and opinions, we can never be entirely sure they are true. This insight reflects a profound philosophical stance, one that has sparked centuries of debate among thinkers. So, why does this quote matter so much? It pushes us to critically examine our own beliefs. It serves as a reminder to question whether we truly know anything or if we are simply holding on to assumptions. In a world where people often accept information without scrutiny, Socrates' words encourage us to remain open-minded, curious, and willing to challenge our own thinking. This mindset is not only intellectually enriching, but also essential for growth and understanding. The Delphic Oracle on the Wisdom of Socrates. Socrates' journey to his distinctive method of self-knowledge through dialogue was a long one shaped by his early love of deep contemplation. In Plato's Symposium, Alcibiades recounts an extraordinary moment during the siege of Potidaea, where Socrates stood motionless in thought for an entire day. Interestingly, Socrates is said to have discovered his wisdom by chance. According to the story, one of his admirers asked the Delphic Oracle, is there anyone wiser than Socrates? The Oracle replied, no. Intrigued by this, Socrates began engaging with individuals he believed to be wiser than himself, only to realize their supposed wisdom was an illusion. Even after more than two millennia, Socrates remains one of history's wisest figures. The Delphic Oracle's declaration, revered across the Greek world, elevated Socrates' position as a thinker. By proclaiming, all I know is that I know nothing, Socrates embraced the idea that true wisdom lies in recognizing the limits of one's knowledge. He believed the pursuit of truth is an endless journey, where every discovery expands the horizons of understanding and reveals just how much more there is to learn. For Socrates, the path of wisdom was not about final answers, but about an eternal quest for deeper truths. Two paradoxical meanings of Socrates' phrase. The meaning of Socrates' reflections in the phrase, all I know is that I know nothing, consisted of two paradoxical things. Firstly, Socrates doubted his own wisdom's superiority over other people's wisdom. Secondly, he wanted but could not doubt the truth of the words of Apollo, the god of Delphi. To resolve the paradox, Socrates began his research with a philosophical survey of citizens and foreigners. He wanted to know the wisest sage. He desired to refute the oracle's prophecy with the statement, Behold, a man wiser than Socrates has been found. So Socrates talked with politicians, poets, artists, and artisans. And he discovered an interesting fact. Any of them, having achieved knowledge and success in a particular area, strengthened in the opinion that he was now wise in all things. But at the same time, no one knew about the essence of things in the world, neither Socrates nor other people. And yet Socrates had the only knowledge that was inaccessible to other people. He realized that he did not know anything, and other people did not know their own limits and did not want to know that they only seemed to be wise. So Socrates saw the limitations of his knowledge, showing cognitive modesty, and other people, because of their hurt pride, kindled hatred towards him. Socrates stunned and stung other people with his skeptical and ironic perception of human wisdom. People thought that Socrates was well-versed in what he accused others of. Finally, however, Socrates realized that the divine is the most knowledgeable. The oracle did not mean to refer to Socrates in the prophecy, but only used his name as an example. The god in his prophecy wanted to say, the wise man is one who, like Socrates, realizes that human wisdom is cheap or worth nothing at all. Therefore, with the phrase, all I know is that I know nothing, Socrates expressed that there is human, limited, and divine, limitless wisdom. In addition, the philosopher believed that a person, the wisest of all, after a god, should not think they know what they do not know. Is the statement, all I know is that I know nothing, contradictory? Scholars have debated the coherence of Socrates' famous statement, all I know is that I know nothing, for centuries. Some people interpret his words to mean that he was admitting his own ignorance. 
Others argue that Socrates was actually saying that he deeply understood the human condition and that true knowledge comes from acknowledging our own limitations. So, which interpretation is correct? It's difficult to say for sure, but there are some things we can consider to understand better what Socrates might have meant. First of all, it's important to remember the historical context in which Socrates lived. He was born in Athens in the 4th century BCE, during a time of great political and social turmoil. Moreover, Socrates himself was no stranger to controversy. He was famously tried and executed for his allegedly corrupting influence on the youth of Athens. In light of all this, it's perhaps not surprising that Socrates would be skeptical of any claims to absolute knowledge. After all, if even the wisest among us can make mistakes, how can we be sure that anything we think we know is truly true? It's also worth considering the fact that Socrates was a man of great intellect and wisdom. He spent his life questioning everything and everyone, including himself. So it's possible that his famous statement was simply a reflection of his own self-awareness and humble view of human knowledge. What can we conclude from all this? It's difficult to say for sure what Socrates meant when he said, all I know is that I know nothing, but it seems reasonable to believe that he was either admitting his ignorance or acknowledging human knowledge's fallibility. Either way, his words continue to challenge and inspire us centuries later. So, what did Socrates really mean by, all I know is that I know nothing? One probable interpretation is that he was simply acknowledging his own fallibility and lack of omniscience. After all, even the wisest person can't know everything. Another way to look at this statement is to see it as a recognition of the inherent limits of human knowledge. We can never really know anything for sure, and even our most firmly held beliefs could be wrong. Of course, this doesn't mean we should give up trying to learn and understand the world around us, but it reminds us that we should always be open to new information and perspectives. At the end of the day, there is no definitive answer to what Socrates meant by his famous statement. But whether you interpret it as a humble acknowledgement of fallibility or a profound claim about the inherent limits of human knowledge, there is no doubt that it contains a great deal of wisdom.